Hi everyone, welcome to today's session, Platform Engineering in Action with Humanitech and Google Cloud. Here's a brief agenda of what we'll be going over today. The talk's only 15 minutes, so I'm gonna be running through things at a fairly high level. Please reach out if you have any questions. My name is Paul Ravello, and I'm a solutions architect at Google Cloud, currently focusing on platform engineering solutions. My team's mission is to make cloud easier, and one of the ways we're tackling that is by exploring the different parts of platform engineering journeys that our customers are experiencing. Things like internal developer portals, team structures, and platform as a product, to name a few. I'm excited to be returning to PlatformCon this year. I had a session last year on how networking can really enable your platform if you uh, up-level and take advantage of modern networking constructs that are available on-premise, but mainly in cloud environments. It was great putting that together and presenting it last year, like I said, and you know, putting this talk together this year was great as well. A lot of fun to pull together with the folks at Humanitech, and I'm glad that I get a chance to present it. So what is this thing? It's a set of curated infrastructure as code templates that provide a starting point to help you build an internal developer platform using the Humanitech Orchestrator and Google Cloud in conjunction with each other. All of this setup is available on GitHub and you can combine it with a free trial of the Humanitech Orchestrator to get started. I do wanna remind everybody that tools are not the only part of platform engineering and your platform engineering journey. You need to embrace platform as a product to truly be successful. But having said that, let's dive in and explore how, in this case, tooling can really uh, enable some particular use cases. So looking at things a bit more in depth, you can see that this setup utilizes Google Cloud uh, services across the integration, resource, monitoring, and security planes. We also have the capability to insert one of our new services, App Hub, at the portal layer to provide more of a Google Cloud-centric view of your applications and their dependencies. In today's talk, we're going to focus on two things. We're going to touch on how developers can leverage workload definitions to get their application dependencies up and running without having to worry about individual infrastructure configuration details, and how admins, platform admins in particular, can ensure that development teams are able to self-service infrastructure dependencies while following best practices and staying compliant. But, you know, we really need something that allows us to talk about this in a little bit more detail. So let's set the stage a bit. We need a sample application, uh, something that's a bit more real world than your standard hello world and has some dependencies that we can map out. So let's talk about Online Boutique. This is Google Cloud's microservice demo application. It's had a few names over the years, but essentially it's a polyglot application that's made up of 11 microservices. And in conjunction, they operate as an e-commerce store that allows you to do some online shopping, add things to a cart, check out all of the, the typical e-commerce bits that you would expect. Today, we're going to focus on one of them, the cart service, and its dependencies on uh, a Redis cache to function. This is really a great sample application. It's meant to work in any Kubernetes environment. Um, you know, obviously, if you run it on Google Cloud, there's some tweaks that you can do in the deployment to take advantage of, of Google Cloud services, but you can just run it in straight Kubernetes anywhere that you want. Uh, I highly recommend that you check out the repo when you get a chance. It's really comprehensive and a great way to see how some of this might look in the real world. So let's get into the two personas and what they're looking to achieve. Typically, there are more personas involved in your platform journey, right? You'll have security and FinOps and on and on. But this presentation is really meant to focus on these specific use cases. Our developer here wants to focus on the application side of things, which is totally natural and makes total sense. But of course, they have external dependencies on this cart service that they need in order for their application to function properly. Like I said earlier, in this case, it's going to be a Redis cache. 
without a platform, um, your developers are left trying to figure out how and where those dependencies should be configured from an infrastructure perspective. And then they have to manage things like the application configurations that leverage those bits of infrastructure that they just somehow deployed. The platform admins have to ensure that developers' needs are met while still enforcing best practices and proper governance over things like secrets and configuration management. If they don't make these infrastructure components self-serviceable to some degree, then the platform team is going to be constantly stuck in an endless cycle of provisioning infrastructure for developers while fielding requests to help with application-specific configuration details. But if they don't integrate that self-servicing with some sort of lifecycle management and dependency mapping, then developers are going to find themselves in a situation where they're constantly self-servicing infrastructure that's long-lived and is just sitting there not utilized correctly as they you know, promote their application and go through development and test cycles. Also, most likely there's already an investment in tooling um, around some of these capabilities like CICD, artifact management, whatever it might be. So whatever platform you're building kind of needs to leverage that stuff where it makes sense. Um, and your platform really does have to allow for that uh, interoperability. After deploying the reference architecture, there's some pieces of configuration that the platform admin needs to do in order to help make the development teams productive. So generically, at a high level, you have to define an application, uh, in this case, the online boutique, and then define an environment, in this case, development. There's some shared resources that need to be configured here. I want to highlight the GKE cluster and the namespace. These will come into play later when your application is deployed. Okay, now that the application is defined in the platform, we can move into resource definitions. So this is where the real magic happens for me uh, and is essentially the definition of golden paths for infrastructure uh, self-service. These don't have to be application specific. They can be used across applications if needed. You can have many different shapes of resource definitions for different applications, for different application environments, for different developers, whatever it might be. Um, here in this example, we're defining what should be provisioned when a developer asks for a Redis instance. We want to use Google Cloud Memory Store to provide that Redis instance. And we're saying that when that's asked for, here's the specific piece of Terraform that the orchestrator should run to provision it. And here are the variables that the orchestrator has to pass to that Terraform when it's run. With the Humanitech CLI, the platform admin is uh, applying that resource definition YAML to the orchestrator, and that makes it available for use. Once applied, you can see it in the portal and you know, click around and explore it. And developers can use this to see the infrastructure as code that's being referenced by that resource that they're requesting if they choose to go to that level, right? So you can imagine a scenario where a developer um, provisions a Redis instance, realizes it doesn't meet their requirements, wants to um, potentially uh, help the platform admin out um, and avoid you know, creating uh, toil for the platform admin. And they go to this GitHub repo and they open up a PR and say, hey, I need this modified to, to meet my needs, right? Um, you know, when we, when we talk about this though, you have to realize too, that that Terraform, that's really where the guardrails, um, you know, can be applied. So looking at this, it's a very generic example, right? It, it's very straightforward. It just, uh, deploys a very basic memory store instance, but in the real world, you would have all of your best practices and guardrails codified in here and it's done in this Terraform that the orchestrator is calling, the, the developer never has to see this, never has to interact with it. They're only asking for a Redis instance. They don't need to understand those guardrails. They don't need to understand the networking configuration or anything like that. All of that's being handled by the orchestrator when the developer requests that resource. But that this is great, right? But from a, from a developer perspective, what does it look like, right? We talked about the platform admin here and what it looks like to set up an application, an environment, 
and create some resource definitions. But when a developer wants to utilize this, how does that how does that work? What does that look like? Okay, so in in these examples, we're using something called Score. So Score is a specification that can be used by developers to define what their workloads require from a runtime perspective, but also from a dependency perspective. Um, developers don't need to define how those things are configured just what something is and potentially what capabilities it might have. We'll get into that a bit more in the coming slide, but I really recommend that you check out the site if you haven't already. It has some great examples of specific implementations. I've been using the SCORE Kubernetes CLI quite a bit lately, and I'm really enjoying it. Also, there's a link to a fork of the online boutique application here that has SCORE files added to it for each of the services. So shout out to Mateo at Humanitech for putting that together for us. All right, so the platform is all configured, our resources are defined, and our developers have been onboarded. Let's see how a developer would use SCORE to define their application's runtime and dependency requirements. So here the um, developer is manually defining the container image, but this can be dynamically added during the deployment pipeline run. They are then specifying a variable to be passed to the running container. But what's interesting here is that they are building that variable totally dynamically. And they're even referencing a resource that they're requesting later in the file. That's a really nice way of injecting a secret and removes the secret management overhead from the developer. Next, they're defining CPU and memory requirements, but not specifying where or how to run this, only what they need to run it. The orchestrator will make that decision based on the application configuration that the platform admin created earlier. Remember that GKE cluster and the namespace that was configured for the online boutique development environment. That's where this comes into play. Next, in the resource section, the developer is asking for a Redis cache just by specifying the resource type of Redis. That dovetails with the resource definition that the platform admin created earlier. But notice there's no mention of any of the infrastructure configuration, just asking for a Redis cache. Finally, since this is a microservices that other services will be connecting to, they specify a port to expose, but again, not how to expose it. The orchestrator will make that decision based on how the application is configured. In most cases, this score file would be actioned as a step in a GitOps pipeline, but in this example, the developer is using the Humanitech CLI to apply it to the orchestrator manually. Once the score file for the service has been applied, you can see the service in the portal, including its dependencies, exposed ports, and other relevant information, and contextual links that are useful for exploring your application and its dependencies. Now, it's at this point in the talk I wanted to pivot to screen sharing and step through some of what we just showed on the previous slides. But um, unfortunately, the talk's capped at 15 minutes, and I need to start wrapping things up to end on time. I hope that there was enough detail to give you an idea of what some of the key components and capabilities of the Humanitech platform are, and also how nicely they integrate with Google Cloud out of the box and create a really nice experience for both your platform admins and your development teams that are using Google Cloud. Um, using the examples laid out here as a form of guidance, you can really help increase developer velocity, improve your security posture, and provide a common abstraction point for infrastructure and development teams to work together on things. In closing, um, thank you for listening to me today. I hope you were able to pick up something new to help you along with your platform journey. And remember, Google Cloud loves platforms.